What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Trail Makers and today I will be attempting to go supersonic speeds in a glider. Now I've gone supersonic with the big jet, I've gone supersonic with the big propellers, and I've even gone supersonic with miniguns, but I've been avoiding doing this with the small jets, or rather the smallest jets in the game that we just got, simply because I think it's just too simple and similar to what I've done in the past. Here, let me demonstrate. In fact, I think it's gonna be so simple that I'm actually going to do it in real time. I'm gonna build it right now, we'll test it, and you guys will see exactly what I mean. Now, obviously, we need a cockpit, and I'm gonna slap some skis onto this because they are the lowest friction uh, 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 tool thing that we can use to slide on the ground. Gonna slap a cone up front, cause, you know, why not? And now, I'm just gonna stack some boosters behind here. Some of these small rocket thrusters, there we go. Now, I do have to connect them up, so I'm gonna use a lattice like this i think you guys will see in a second here perfect there's the basic setup and now literally i'm just gonna take this and i'm gonna copy and paste it a bunch of times oh i don't want to paint it i want to copy and paste it all right that should be enough strap some aerodynamics to the back strap a couple of skis to the back you know because uh we need uh, we need something to slide on there as well and let's hop in on this thing guys let's check it out here we go speeding up speeding up the rocket sled speeding up the rocket thrusters are doing their work. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And boom. There you have it, guys. Going supersonic with the rocket thrusters in this game is quite easy if you just stack enough of them and make the vehicle slim, which is why I decided to switch it up and try to make a glider that breaks the sound barrier as it gets launched. So the basic idea that I really want to try out here is building some kind of catapult that will essentially uh, help me launch my glider with the assistance of these rocket thrusters, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to try here. I need to find, there you go, the anchor pin because I'm going to have to anchor this whole thing down to the ground. And I'm just going to build a basic... Uh, I guess like uh, centrifugal catapult here and see you know see where we can get with it so what you guys see here is a very basic representation of what I want to try and do today I've got uh, some stackable helicopter engines that are acting as a free pivot and if I get into this thing and start spinning it all around as you can see um, I am you know I am gaining speed and if I release <laughs> then it does throw me but clearly this sucks clearly this is awful right so I need to do a lot more work to actually make this spin up faster and also well launch the cockpit in such a way that it doesn't just tumble you know and actually go straight so let's start with making a better catapult and then we can turn this cockpit into a glider that can be attached to the catapult and hopefully we can launch the thing at supersonic speeds i don't know so i'm going to start by building a much bigger base here because obviously this catapult needs to be taller i don't think it needs to be wider but it might need to be wider to accommodate all the jet thrusters that i'm going to be putting on it so let's strap some anchors down and start building Alrighty, here we go. I have a bunch of, well, I basically have a catapult with a bunch of rocket thrusters on it with a cockpit on a detachable block. And let's see what the heck this even does. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh no, it's gonna rip it out of the ground. Uh, so one thing that I can think of immediately is we might need a counterbalance. And if we're doing a counterbalance, we might as well just double up on the thrusters, right? So that the same amount of thrusters are on top and then you have a balanced assembly and it all spins uh, more or less balanced. So uh, let me do that. Let's, let's give that a try. Let's try and select all this and just copy it over. Oh, that worked surprisingly well. I'm not gonna lie. All right, drop it down, get into... Oh, oh, wh what? Co what? Dude, relax, relax, relax. Okay, uh, seems okay. Still kind of jittery, but let's go. Oh my goodness. Can we spin... <laughs> We're going 500 kilometers an hour, and this thing is just eating itself. Oh no. <laughs> what if I release? 
<laughs> uh, releasing the cockpit did not have the results that I expected. I think what I might have to do down the line is actually use uh, some speed sensors and some altitude sensors. Oops. To, oh no, oh boy, okay, let's just backspace. Uh, and some altitude sensors to actually trigger the release mechanism of the cockpit. Because I can't, I can't time this, you know? Like, that was ridiculous. Uh, by the time my eyes see it come around to the top, it's already too late for me to press the button, so... I think I'll definitely have to employ a little bit of, uh, you know, simple logic here. But, I mean, we're getting somewhere, guys. We're definitely getting somewhere. I do think that we need more thrusters and... I might actually, yeah, you know what, I might make this thing a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier, and just see how, you know, how that affects it, because clearly, clearly this thing is struggling a little bit, and it might need a bigger base too, so let's keep building. 10 minutes later, and I've got this thing right here, and as you can see here, let's actually get into it, I will show you what I did, I made the base a lot larger, so that you know, the whole thing is more stable and doesn't try to rip out of the ground. I have a crazy amount of the spikes, so that should be more than sufficient to hold it down. I actually think if I'm gonna need, like, more... Uh, complexity points for thrusters and other stuff. I might have to get rid of some of the spikes, but we'll test it like this for now. Now, the other thing you might notice is I did make it bigger. I made it wider, and one thing that I'm realizing now is that I actually shouldn't have made these wider. I should have made them longer to minimize the drag on them. Silly me, but we're gonna try it like this. I also replaced all of the structural members with, uh, with aerodynamic members because I figured, you know, it's better to have good aerodynamics for this and try and get up to, uh, you know, mock speed. Oh boy, come on, this it's not even facing the right way. You guys can't even see the aerodynamics. <laughs> there, so as you can see, this right here is a lot better than... Oh my goodness, am I actually gonna have to delete something to show you guys? Yeah, it's a lot better than that, right? So, even though it's heavier, uh, hopefully it, uh, you know, the extra aerodynamic lack of resistance, <laughs> I can't speak English today, is uh, is going to help me. I also replaced, uh, you know, the structural members here with the, uh, with the slope pieces, hoping that that will also help, you know, the whole thing go faster. So let's, uh, let's actually test this out. Let's see how this goes. Oh, and I reinforced these sides because I did test it, uh, you know, just ever so slightly, and this whole thing started freaking out. So I had to reinforce it a bit. Oh boy, okay. Okay, it, it definitely spins up slower because the arms are wider out, but can we get to mock speed? Oh, oh no, it's freaking out again. See? See? It's freaking out. This is what I was talking about. This is what I was worried about. It's freaking out. <laughs> I mean, it's still speeding up. I see a thousand. We're, we're hitting a thousand. Can we hit a thousand consistently? We're not. We're like cycling. Oh, man. I think a bunch of the force is actually being distributed through the whole structure here, and thus not all the force is actually going towards spinning the darn thing. Okay, I might have to reinforce force the structure a bit more and I might rebuild oh boy nope nope stop stop okay there we go <laughs> when it's spinning up top it doesn't want to doesn't want to repair but yeah uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build these into pods to make them more streamlined instead of just like a wall of thrusters you know and I will also reinforce this structure so that hopefully we get less wobbling and less energy wasted uh, you know through the vibration of the structure so let's do it and this is the part where I need to remove a bunch of anchor pins to actually make this happen. Because I am out of complexity points. Now the other reason I made this really tall, guys, is because I want to be able to launch the glider and not have it hit the ground. You know, because you may think, well, you can make that way shorter and it will likely spin up faster and, you know, just probably oscillate a lot less. And I hear ya. I hear ya. I've thought about that. However... I really want this thing to, like, fly and not just smash into the ground after it, you know, breaks a sound barrier. So, that's my line of thinking there. Sort of running out of complexity again, but let's just see if this even works a little bit better as far as the oscillation goes. It's better, but, like, now it's oscillating above my support. So, something to take into consideration. Can I go consistently 1000 now? That'll be a good indicator. Yeah, I can. Wow, we're actually managing to dampen out some of that vibration and, uh, you know, retain the energy for spinning up the whole thing. That's awesome. 
All right, I'm gonna keep going. I always forget to hide this instruction thing. <laughs> Check it out, guys. So this is the uh, the thruster pod, the rocket thruster pod that I decided to use instead of having a wall of thrusters. This is certainly gonna use. Uh, sorry, this is certainly going to cause a lot less drag. And I think uh, I think this has a chance of getting us to mock speed with actually less thrusters than before because we don't have to overcome a much larger uh, drag force. So let's slap this on and see how it does. Here we are. It's all reassembled. I don't have my supports quite yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna add those. I'm gonna add those. I'm just. I got distracted by the thruster pod, okay? And for some reason, one of my pieces here is not cooperating. So let's just fix that up. And let's see how this works. Let's see how... Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try that again. All right, I'm in it. I'm starting it up. And let's see if we can get to mock speed. Let's see if we can break the sound. Oh my goodness, the floppy structure. The floppy structure is so bad. Uh, I mean, I'm going the same speed with less thrusters, so that's a good sign, but clearly this thing needs some help. <laughs> it needs some help. Alrighty, here we go. I have some side supports now. Let's see if, uh, let's see if this does better. I really hope it does. I've been trying to balance the assembly. Oh, wow. Oh my god. I did not expect to go supersonic that fast. <laughs> I mean, I haven't achieved my goal, but I didn't expect this whole centrifuge thing to go supersonic that quick. That is awesome. Can I release? Oh no. <laughs> uh, so the release mechanism is definitely going to be a tricky one, guys. Because... I didn't mean to do that. Because two things have to happen. I need to go mock speed, like it's doing right now, and I need to be almost at the top of its cycle so that it launches the, you know, the cockpit in such a trajectory that it doesn't just hit the ground. <laughs> oh no. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go and build the glider that I intend to use for this. Maybe put some logic on it, make sure it flies well, and then we can strap it to this thing and see if it, you know, see if it can actually actually be a supersonic glider. Let's give it a go. I'm gonna go over the danger zone because I need to test this glider off a, you know, off a cliff or something, but I'll see you guys there. Alrighty, let's build this glider. I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to see this thing break uh, the sound barrier with absolutely no engines. It's going to look silly, but I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I am going to need a couple of logic gates. I'm gonna need an AND gate. I'm gonna need a speed sensor. Definitely need a speed sensor. Let's throw that on. And I'm going to need an altitude sensor as well. The altitude sensor will have to be messed around with depending on, you know, my elevation on the map that I choose to do this on. But that's okay. That's not a big deal. It's all part of the fun. And now I just need to, I think, extend this a little bit so that it actually flies and doesn't just, like, flip over on itself, you know? There you go. Uh, need some wings, need some arrow. Uh, also need the ant gate. Uh, I need some elevators. Where are the small elevators? Big ele There you go. Small elevators. Excellent. I do need some wings as well. Maybe some small modular wings. Looks good to me. Uh, a little, little further back, I'd say. There we go. Can I, can I copy it? There we go. And I need some ailerons. Oh, perfect. Oh, I need some rear stabilizers as well, but maybe some, some small arrow blocks just to make this thing a little prettier. Oh, wrong way. Perfect. Excellent. And maybe a two by two here, just like that. I mean, this looks good to me. However, I just want to make sure that uh, this will actually glide. <laughs> so let's put an engine on it with a detachable block. And that way we can launch it off the carrier and see what happens. Come on. Go, go, go. Oh boy. Oh, okay. This actually glides pretty well. Wow, who knew? I'm getting better at building flying stuff. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. I didn't glide for a very long time, but... I think that was okay. I don't know. Let's let's try again. The engine's like offset. Oh boy. Hey, I actually managed to take off. It does have lift. It seems like it can glide pretty decent, guys. Yep. 
Yep, this looks good. I am 100% strapping this to the Utapult and seeing if this little guy can actually go supersonic. This, this will be awesome. I am so hyped for this, guys. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love the new parts too. Can we just, can we just stop for a moment and appreciate the new parts yet again? They're so wonderful. There we go. It's all strapped in. I had to rebuild it for some reason, but that's fine. Uh, let's give it a try. Let's give this thing a go. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm actually wondering because I did add more drag if we're even going to be able to reach supersonic speeds anymore. Okay, here we go. Getting close. Are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. Come on, are you kidding me? Oh no, the extra drag isn't letting me go supersonic speeds. <laughs> uh, and there's a bit of wobbling still going on. Maybe I need to raise my supports. I do have, I do, excuse me, excuse me, there we go. I do have some complexity limit left to maybe add some, uh, some power cores or maybe, I don't know, just stabilize this thing more, try to get the rest of the vibration out of it and see if that helps. I mean, that that might be the way to go here. Alrighty, I did it. I've done it. I raised the support, so they're further up high now. As you can see, I have some uh, blocks here left over from where they used to be, and I didn't add any more power cores. I'm really curious to see if this will, you know, let us go supersonic again. I also need to adjust my distance sensor because I want this thing to release under the condition where I'm going supersonic speeds, and I am at the top of the cycle, which is what the altitude meter is for. What I want to see is what value we're hitting on this thing when we're almost at the top of the, uh, you know, the cycle there. So let's, uh, let's strap a camera on, because we have that now, and it's awesome. And uh, we'll be able to tell what value that is. So now, if I go into this thing and I press shift, yes, that's awesome. Okay, let's start it up. Let's see what it is, Three, 340. So 340 looks to be the max value. So I'm gonna set it at like 339 and we can try launching this thing. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I do like the idea of automating the launch because that way it eliminates the human error aspect of things. Okay, speed meter is good. I actually set it to slightly higher uh, than what mock speed is just because I want to make sure that we really spin this thing up and keep the momentum going after it's launched. So let's let's try. Let's see. We've got the improved stability, no extra thrusters and automatic launching. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby. You can do this. If this works, I'm naming my company Cosmo X. Almost there. Oh, <gasps> what the frick happened? I don't even know what happened. Did it like crash into the ground? What happened? It's definitely more stable. Oh man, it does launch it, I think. Okay, I think I need to try this on the map with some height, somewhere where I actually have a distance to fall because I can't tell what's happening here, guys. I feel like it might be releasing fine, but then smashing into the ground. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to a different map. My palms are actually so sweaty because I've worked on this for quite some time and I don't even have a clue if this is going to work out. I mean, this... This is very questionable, but I think I'm going to do this on the helipad uh, because the helipad has quite uh, quite a good height. It's got a flat spot and it doesn't have much of a lip where I could potentially, you know, wreck myself into the ground or into some kind of a structure. So I'm going to respawn it and I guess we'll just try again. Oh, wait, I need to adjust the distance sensor, uh, the altitude sensor rather. So it says 433, and on the other map we had 303 to 340, meaning there's a 37 unit difference, meaning that 470 is the max height here. Okay, alrighty, I'll, uh, I'll, I guess I'll set it to like 469, I don't know. 467, you know what, just, uh, just to release it a little bit early and give it a more, uh, like, upwards trajectory, you know, not send it directly to the freaking ground again, because that... That did not go well. <laughs> All right, and now of course we're flying in the opposite direction, so I have to turn this whole thing around. All righty, here we go, the moment of truth. I am so nervous, I, I really want this to work, okay? <laughs> this thing is reinforced, it has enough power. I mean, everything for a successful launch is there. It's just a matter of whether the physics are gonna like me or not. Let's go. Whew, so nerve wracking. And this is automatic release, like I just have to wait to control the glider and that's it. Okay, here we go, speeding up, speeding up. Getting a bit of oscillation, but that's okay. 
Keep going, baby. You got this. The base is not having a good time. The base is not having a good time. All right. Come on. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It actually works. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I... I flew mock speed for like, you know, a second, the fraction of a second, but this glider did, did in fact go mock speed. That is awesome. And hey, this thing flies well. I never tested it from, uh, you know, from a really tall height. Okay, I want to do that again. That is, that is so sick. Uh, what? It, it happened in like the flash of an eye. I didn't even, sorry, in the blink of an eye. I didn't even realize that uh that it happened until like a second later i i totally thought it was just gonna implode on itself again oh my goodness this is awesome i didn't pay attention to anything the speeds are like nothing nothing <laughs> okay let's uh i'm sure i'll be able to pause the video afterwards and assess everything but i want to be able to analyze this for you guys in the moment i'm sure i'm gonna get some comments saying well cosmo it's not actually a supersonic glider because it you know it doesn't go supersonic afterwards but hey it gets launched at supersonic speeds and it's got the supersonic cone and it clearly breaks the sound barrier because you hear the boom and it does all the things so i don't know i don't know i'm calling this a success so far <laughs> let's go again watching the speed right after launch i want to see what happens what speed it goes yes okay okay so i mean it clearly only goes supersonic when it launches you know but i think the point still stands it's uh it's a glider that doesn't have any engines that at some point in its uh launching career <laughs> I don't know why I'm, why I'm speaking like this. Uh, go supersonic. So this is wicked. I wonder if like, I wonder if I could add more thrusters. Let's see how fast this thing can actually spin up. Let's just bump this up to a ridiculous value and then we can change it. I just want to see how fast this thing can actually spin. And then I will make it deploy at that maximum speed and see if the glider can go supersonic speeds for a split second without without being attached to anything. Wow, it is actually not going much past mock speed. That is, that is kind of insane. I literally made it go like mock speed. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> and it rapidly disassembled itself. Very good. Well, I'm definitely gonna save this version uh, because it works, uh, but I want to try and see if I can make it go slightly faster than mock speed so that, you know, the glider actually goes uh, you know, supersonic speeds for a bit while not attached to anything. So let me give that a try. Oh yeah, this will definitely make it go faster, I think. I just used regular dragon thrusters. Perfect. I think, I think this will be good, guys. We're gonna set it to 1325, the, the speed meter that is, and then see if we can get the, uh, you know, the little guy to go supersonic speeds for just a split second. Yes, oh, I wasn't looking at the speed though. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't looking at the speed. Okay, I gotta, I gotta do that again. That was so good though. That launched so well. I love this thing. <laughs> if there was ever a need for, uh, for supersonic glider launchers, I'm your guy. <laughs> I'm watching the speed for when it releases. I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems to slow down almost immediately. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, what can you expect, right? It, uh, it clearly doesn't have its own power sources, but for a split second there, when it gets launched, this little guy actually goes supersonic, and that is exactly what I set out to do today. Now, if you guys can think of a use for, you know, supersonic glider launchers, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Maybe uh, me and the boys can do some challenges, but... Other than that, this uh, this was just a novelty thing. I I really enjoyed experimenting with it because I've never done something like this before. I think it's a slightly unique way of you know going supersonic and you know doing things a little bit outside the box. I didn't just want to you know build another land train and and do that. But come on, come on, yes, oh, it's so good. It seems like it almost immediately levels out at around like 700, 600 kilometers an hour. But hey, it breaks the sound barrier when it gets launched and that is all that matters to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know down in the comments below what you thought. Give me some other cool ideas and I will see you in the next video. Also subscribe because I'm so close to 100,000.